just lied to our top news journalist who has a perfect track record of outstandingly entertaining and informative interviews. He is renowned for never producing a dull or misinformed interview. You guessed it. It's James Stevenston. James? What have you got for us today? Thanks, Bill. Meet Rufus Christopher. You may remember him as the world-renowned lawyer who used the law to crack down on fish and chip shops who sold hamburgers labelled as homemade hamburgers when they were in fact produced entirely in store. Well, from law to poor, thanks to the government's new irrelevance tax, Rufus now has nothing but an estranged wife and a mortgage. In a desperate attempt to do something meaningful with his life, he has now made a vow to sit here in this garden on this very bench for 11 hours a day for 365 days. Every day he gets up, gets ready, sits down. Gets up, gets ready, sits down. Gets up, gets ready, sits down. Who are you? I am James Stevenston from Channel 777. I'm the one doing the story about you. Right. Sits down. He's been at it for nearly four months now, and who knows when it's going to end. What kind of training did you undergo in preparation for this endeavour? None. Okay, um, uh, and what steps do you take to avoid becoming bored? I'm always bored. I... I see. Uh, um, sorry, just, um, yeah, uh, can you elaborate? It was here, in this moment of deep sadness, that James Howard Stevenson decided to be what he had always wanted to be since he was a five-year-old boy child, a footballer. But as we all know, that was a dirt dumb, stupid decision. You're watching Channel 777 News. We'll be right back after these messages. It explodes like that, but it's actually just tomato sauce, you see? My name is Doug Grins a lot, but my mates call me Davo, because. I don't know why. I guess I'm known as a bit of a notorious practical joker. I'm half man, half tree, and sicker than ever before. Ah, I gotcha! Ah! <laughs> Devo, what's with all the mandarins? What's not to like? They're instant and delicious. Did you seen the doctor today? Yeah. Broken leg. This is exactly the kind of opportunity that I look out for. So I'm going to use this ruler with my shoe on the end of it. I'll stick it down my pants, it'll pose as my leg. It'll be totally out of place with tomato sauce everywhere. Mitchell comes in, says, I meant figuratively, and voila. First I just have to bend this ruler a little bit with the hammer. So, I'll just... Oh. Hello? This is Oliver Station 9 broadcasting on all emergency channels. Emergency! We need urgent assistance! I need urgent... There's something in the docking clusters. I'm already disappeared. Video editors have to work with a lot of animal dung. But especially me, because I work for cheap. How do I edit? I get the first clip and I put it here. I get the second clip and I put it there. I get the third clip and I don't know. Maybe I put it here. I don't know. I put the video where I want to put it. I have sense of humor unlike any other. What I like to do, I put faces of little known Russian politician in unlikely places. Like egg at Easter. This is video I'm working on right now. It is love scene between man and tree. It is dramatic because man has cancer. It's bullshit. Here I have image of Russian politician and former Soviet military officer Alexander Ratskoy. I just drop him in the background and... <laughs> it is funny. If only I were a tree too. Then we could be together. Oh, thank God. Stop trying to outperform me. I'm a professional. It's not gonna work. Wooden acting. I can read. Profession. Suspense. Martin Scorsese. Do something with bar. Something with far more power and majesty. Oh hi there. I'm just watching my showreel, and so are you. Hi, I'm Mitchell Burns, dramatic actor, professionally versed in the creative process and ready to make your dramatic dreams come true. Sorry? Oh, sorry, I was just watching my showreel. <laughs> Some people say I look like a young Drew Barrymore.
But I don't know who he is. If you look at all of the Oscar winners of the past two decades, they've all got one thing in common. They're dramatic character roles with issues. I'm one-upping all of them. What's the most relevant dramatic issue of our time? Cancer. It only makes sense that I cash in on that. So all of my characters have cancer. Some I've done over the years. A troubled writer with cancer. An injured secret agent with amnesia and cancer. A blank-faced dyslexic thriller action hero working out how to bring down the corrupt government. Think Tom Cruise with cancer. Ah, 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 my leg, my leg. I ah, meant figuratively. Ah. Sorry to keep you waiting. Davo just got back from the doctors. Turns out he has cancer. Lucky bastard. If there's one thing I want in life, it's cancer. That'd seriously help with my Stanislavski exercises. You talking about my cancer? Yeah, what of it? I've got cancer. Stop gloating. He's just jealous. Go buy a bag of mandarins or yeah, something. Yeah, well maybe I will. Knock yourself out. Another morning, another life in the wild, another world of pain and aid that's only I should be accustomed to by now. I do not know who I can trust, but as I walked those empty streets, I did but have one thought. Was this my reality because of the hand of my own doing? Was mine the burden of guilt, for it was I alone who found myself upon the front lines of society, where I alone could witness the buzzing alarms of uncommon tragedy? Was it my task and mine alone to prevent it? Or does the guilt in some part too lie with those who did not join me at the front line, but waited in their lives of self-exploration and personal endeavor? I do feel upon my aching shoulders the weight of cut-shot histories, innocent loves and sacrifice never fulfilled.